Three.js is a 3D JavaScript library that helps you build super cool web applications. In this video, you will review local setup using physics, particles, character controls, and more. Make sure you subscribe below to help this channel grow. Create a folder on your desktop and give it any name you like. Open set folder in your terminal and type npm create v at latest to initiate a v project. Going through the wizard, the project name is perikey4 slash press enter for the package name, select vanilla, then JavaScript. Type npm install, then npm install 3 to bring in 3.js. You can open this file in VS Code however you're comfortable and finally type npm run dev. Open the browser of your choice and navigate to the appropriate localhost. Your browser screen should look like mine. Let's clean up these files first by removing everything in style.css and saving it. Remove everything from line one and main.js that's importing the CSS and save. You can go ahead and delete the JavaScript.svg and counter.js completely. In index.html, delete the div and the body tag. To continue setting up, in the index.html, go ahead and change your title in the head. Inside of style.css, we'll set the body margin to zero. For our JavaScript, we're going to go to 3gs.org, click the documentation that should take you to the create a scene section. You can scroll all the way to the bottom and copy that code block and paste it into main.js. When you save, you should see a green rotating cube. If you're curious to know what each line of code means, leave a comment and I'll make an in-depth video explaining each of the lines. Let's keep building. At this time, if you were to resize your screen, your scene will be a bit messed up. There's a super simple fix by creating an event listener for the window at the bottom of your document. We'll say window.add event listener for the resize and an arrow function. The function will read camera.aspect is equal to the window.inner width divided by the window.inner height. We'll take the camera and update its projection matrix, and then we'll take our renderer.set size, passing in window.inner width, window.inner height, save, and see the difference. To start building our world, we'll need a ground. In the animate, remove the cube rotation. We'll also change the constant cube to be constant ground. We can go ahead and instead of passing in geometry and materials, let's just take those values and pass them directly into the constant ground to save some room. Make sure you add the ground to the scene. We can go ahead and change the dimensions of our ground by making its width 30, the height will remain 1, and the depth 30. We'll lower its position on the Y to negative 1. Let's modify our camera by saying camera.position C is equal to 4.5 and camera.position Y is equal to 1.5. We're going to need a player. Copy and paste the entire ground object and let's change a few details. We're going to change the ground to player. We'll change the width, height, and depth to 0 0.5 and the color property to FF0000 to make it red. Make sure you add it to the scene and check it out. To add some controls to our character, at the bottom of the screen, we'll have an event listener listening for the key down. We'll check if the key down is equal to D or arrow right, then we'll take the player and set its position to plus equal one. If the key down is A or arrow left, then we'll set the player dot position X to subtract by one. Moving forward to debug our game, we'll want to really see what's going on so we can add some orbit controls. Import orbit controls at the top of your document, then create a constant controls variable that's going to be equal to a new instance of the orbit controls, passing in the camera and render dot dom element. Inside of our animate function, call controls.update. Save your scene and use your mouse to view the scene differently. Something else that's helpful is a grid helper. Above the animate function, we can add const grid helper is equal to 3.grid helper, passing in 30 for our size and 30 for our divisions, then add the grid helper to the scene. Check it out and see what's going on. We're going to get our power ups that we'll collect up and running, starting with the UI. Inside of index.html, create a div with the ID UI. Inside of that div is h1 that says points, followed by a span with the ID points set to the value of 00. zero. Go ahead and save that, and in style.css, grab the UI and say the margin is 0, the position is absolute, the top is 10 pixels, and the left is 10 pixels. We'll then take the h1 selector and set its color to white smoke. When you save, you should see the UI display. For our JavaScript, we're going to grab on to the points UI by setting it equal to a query selector for the ID point span. You can console log this to make sure it's properly selected. We'll also create a let variable called points, set it equal to zero. We're going to use this later. You're making awesome progress. Let's keep going. For our power ups, it's going to be a torus shape and we're going to have it randomly spawn on the screen and move towards the player. Whenever the player hits the power ups, a point will be added and it will display in the UI. Let's accomplish this. Underneath the player, we'll create a const power up and we'll set it equal to a new three mesh that has torus geometry with the parameters 1, 0 0.4, 16, and 15, and it has a material of a mesh basic material with the color FFF00. We'll go ahead and scale it down by saying powerup.scale.set 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. 
go ahead and save it. You have to move your player around to be able to see the Taurus or the power up that we just created. We want to have multiple power ups. So to do that, we'll create an array that will hold our multiples called power ups. And then we'll have a for loop. Inside of that for loop, you can take all the code we just created about the power up and paste it inside there. Additionally, we'll add a power up dot name and set it equal to power up plus I plus one. We won't be using this inside of this project, but it's useful to know for yourself for future projects. Go ahead and add this to the power ups array. Change this position of the X to I plus two. Make sure you add it to the scene and see what's going on. This looks really cool, but we want our power up to generate on a random X. So to do that at the top of our document, we'll have a constant variable called random range num that's set to an arrow function with the parameters max and min. Inside there, we'll have some code that says, hey, we want this code to return a random whole number that is between this range. You can go ahead and use this inside of our power up loop by setting its value to random range num, passing in eight and negative eight. When you save it, you should see those random positions. There might be some overlapping and that's okay for now. We also want our power up to spawn on a random Z position. So we'll do the same thing, but change the position Z and pass in the new range of negative five and negative 10. We're going to be using the numbers eight, negative eight, negative five, negative 10 a lot to represent the X and the Z range. Go ahead and check out the code. To get our power ups moving towards our player, we'll go ahead to the top of the document and create a const called move obstacles that is equal to an arrow function that has the parameters array, speed, max X, min X, max Z, min Z. Inside, we'll loop through the array and we'll move each element on its position Z plus equaling the speed. And we'll check once the element's position Z is greater than the camera's position Z, then we'll go ahead and respawn it at a new location. You can go ahead and call this move obstacles function inside of the animate passing in power ups, the speed of 0 0.1 in that range, 8, negative 8, negative 5, negative 10. Save and check it out. If you were to look at your scene from the side, you can see the respawn happening. Pretty cool. And as a challenge, you can even try to create a random speed that it generates at between a certain range. Let's get started with some collision detection. There's multiple ways to accomplish this in 3JS, but I like to accomplish this using physics. So we're gonna use Canon to do that. Using physics can be a bit intimidating, but don't worry, you totally got this. It's really fun and really useful. So just make it through this project. And if you have any questions, leave them below. Let's give a huge shout out to the maintainers of this physics library. You guys are awesome. Thank you for what you do. In order to use physics, we'll need to install it. So you can close your terminal and say npm install canon-es and canon-es-debugger. Restart your terminal and main.js will import canon and import our canon debugger. To actually use canon in the debugger, first we'll need to create an instance of the canon world that is held by the constant world variable, make sure you pass in gravity. For our debugger, we'll have a constant canon debugger and we'll pass in the scene in the world and some parameters, for example, the color and the scale. In our animate function, we'll go ahead and update our world and we'll update our canon debugger. You can comment out the grid helper or delete it. We won't need it anymore. When you're working with physics, you have to understand the different body types. There's dynamic, kinematic, and static. We won't necessarily go over that inside of this video, but to my understanding for our application, we're only gonna be working with static body except for our player, which is going to be dynamic. Know that working with physics is so cool. There's so many possibilities. So after this video, make sure you explore and play with your code to see all the possibilities. This project is going to be super, super simple. So let's get into it. We'll need to add a ground body. Constant ground body is going to be equal to a new canon body. That'll be the shape of a box. Pass in the canon vector threes of 15, 0 0.5, 15, then position it on the Y to negative one, make sure you add it to the world. It's important to note that when you're working with dimensions in Canon, it's gonna be half the size of the 3JS dimensions. If you want it to fit snug, you can of course modify it however you would like. We're gonna create a physics body for our player. It's gonna be a new Canon body with a mass of one. It's gonna be the shape of a box with a vector three of 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and a fixed rotation of true added to the world. When we move our player around, we're gonna need the physics body and the player to actually stay on top of each other. There's a simple fix inside the anime function, say, hey, player at the position, and we wanna copy the player.body position, and the same thing for the quaterion. We can also update our player controls by changing player to player body that's going to be moving. We'll also add in a reset Set. So if the player gets knocked around, then whenever they press R, their X, Y, and Z will be reset to zero. And if the player presses space bar, then the position Y will be two. Next up, we're going to need to add a power up body to our power ups. There's going to be quite a bit of code to change and move around. So I recommend you watch this section of the video before you go ahead and modify your own code. So the updates are going to look like this. We have constant position X and position Z that's going to be equal to 
a random range num. For our power up, we're going to change this position to be equal to those variables we just created. Then we're going to create a cannon body that's going to be the shape of a sphere that is the size of 0.2. We'll change the position of the power up body and set it to position x, 0, position z. Make sure you add it to the cannon world. Lastly, we'll create an object that holds mesh, which will be the 3JS power up, and body, which will be the cannon JS power up body. Push that object into the power ups. We'll work with it later. We'll need to update our move obstacles code. Wherever it said element.position, we'll need to appropriately change it to element.body position or element.mesh position. Check out the code and modify yours as needed. For the actual collision detection portion of the physics, we're going to go to our player body and add an event listener. The event listener is collide. We're going to then take our power ups array. We're going to say, hey, whenever there's a collision, we want the elements position on the X and Z to respond to a random position. And we want to make sure that the mesh for that body is staying connected to each other. We'll also take our points and add one and we'll take the point span and pass in the points to display. How about our enemies? Let's create our enemies. You can basically copy all the power ups code, change the name enemy wherever needed or enemies and enemy body. The enemy body isn't going to be a sphere. It's actually going to be a cannon box passing in the vector threes of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. We'll also need our enemies to move towards the player. So we'll copy the move obstacles and pass in enemies as our array and we'll pass in 0 0.2 as our speed. For our collision detection for our enemy, we're going to be working inside of that player body event listener. You can go ahead and copy the entire block of code, changing out the power ups array for the enemies array. And you can delete everything inside of it. And we're going to add game over equals true. We're going to have a game state to know when the game is over. So let's get started with that. At the top of the document, add let game over equal to false. We're going to start with the game over being false. Inside of our animate function, we're going to create a conditional that checks, hey, if the game is not over, then keep on moving the obstacles. Else, if the game is over, then we're going to have our points UI span read game over. We're also going to have our player get kicked off the screen by setting its velocity to player.position x, 5 and 5. We'll also have our enemies and we'll say remove the mesh and the body. And our power ups will say remove the mesh and the body from the scene. And we'll check to say, hey, once the player body is no longer visible and it's behind the camera, then you can remove the player and the player body as well from the scene. To add the finishing touches to our game, we're going to add some particles. I actually found this code snippet on CodePen, and I'm going to link it down below. The creator has some other really cool projects you should check out. The most important aspect of our particles is to make sure inside of the anime function, you set its rotation on the X, Y, and Z so that you can see it moving and looking super jazzy and lovely. Look at that. You did it. You created this game. Awesome, awesome, awesome work. You should be so proud of yourself. This is a really great starter project. There's a lot of room for personalization and customization to change things up and add to this project. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something. So if you did, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment to let me know what we should work on next time, and I'll see you soon. Bye.